How to fake the anamorphic look. I want to show you how I went from this to this. The anamorphic look is so cool, but anamorphic lenses have, in my opinion, two crippling disadvantages in uh, one, the cost, and two, no autofocus. This is gonna be tricky to pull off, especially to convince uh, filmmaker nerds, but non-filmmaker nerds don't really know what anamorphic is. In fact, they don't care what anamorphic is. However, I think people have a very good understanding of what cinematic looks like. Uh, so that's my task for today, and I'm just gonna have to pull out every trick I can think of to pull this off. As ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bits you want, no trouble. However, this is a step-by-step -step guide, so I wouldn't recommend it in this case. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could just take the time, if you haven't already, to reach down and hit that subscribe button. Um, puts a smile on my face, helps the channel, and I thank you so much in advance. This is also completely unsponsored content, but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. If you find these videos helpful, this is the best way to support it. Um, plus, any funds from Patreon I put back into the channel and I buy gear and give it to my backers. Um, so it's really win-win and all the details of that are below. I thank you. Let's really quickly just go over what anamorphic lenses actually do so that we know what to do to our regular spherical lens footage. Number one, they capture a field of view that is actually slightly wider than your focal length suggests. Now, there's not a lot I can do to affect that with effects, but I can try. Two, oval bokeh blobs. Now, that is also really tricky to do in post, but again, I'll see what I can do. Three, horizontal flaring, and this is actually probably the easiest thing to do in post, but the trick really is not to go overboard and make it look really kind of fake and gaudy, so subtlety is gonna be the key here. Number four, there are strange things that happen to the detail in your frame. Firstly, there's the focus fall off, and this happens at the edges. We get kind of a little bit softer look on the edges. And then we have the whole de-squeezed look. So, you know, the footage is, when it comes out of the camera, it looks stretched and then you de-squeeze it in post. And that effectively is kind of concentrating those pixels down. So actually um, it can be a good thing for detail. I'm just gonna have to try my best with this. Um, let me show you the clip that I'm gonna be working on. And here it is, I should mention, I did film this clip with a black mist filter on the lens, which blooms highlights and helps to de-digitize the look. But you can also use something like Eric Lenz's Bloom Mist plugin, which does a commendable job of replicating the look of a mist filter. I'll link to that plugin plus my review of it. It's definitely worth a watch. And if you ever want to check out any of Eric Lenz's plugins, I did manage to get a code for you. Use the code HARV at the checkout for a tasty discount. Let's fake the anamorphic look, shall we? Okay, so here's our clip, and I'm gonna start by doing just a couple of kind of housekeeping tweaks. And the first thing I wanna do is just stabilize the clip. It was shot on a gimbal, but I want it to be silky smooth. Next, I wanna do just a really quick bit of keyframing because inevitably we're gonna end up with widescreen bars. And so I want to keyframe the position of the subject so I'm not cutting off his head or his feet. This is really simple to do and it's actually a really huge benefit of using widescreen bars. And there we go, that is looking good. Next, I want to create two layers. I want to have the background and our subject. So I'm gonna get rid of the widescreen bars just for now, and then I'm gonna duplicate our clip and place one on top of the other. I'm then gonna use one of my new favorite tools, and that is M Roto AI from Motion VFX. And I'm just gonna mask our subject, and this is just so quick and easy. I'm just gonna roughly draw around him, and boom track him backwards and forwards. And there we have a fully tracked mask. And if you haven't seen my review of this product, highly recommended, I will link it. Of course, in that review, I do go more into how to use Mrota AI, so I'm not gonna do it in this video. Needless to say, I'm cleaning up the mask so that it looks natural. And there we have it, looking good. Next, I want to attempt to tackle the whole oval-shaped bokeable thing, which is really difficult to do, but I'm gonna add a directional blur onto our background layer, change it so that it's a vertical blur, and then dial down the amount. And the key here, of course, is subtlety. So I'm gonna dial it all the way down to around 7%. That's kind of what looks right and not too pronounced. 
for me. Next, I'm gonna to attempt to do something pretty tricky, and that's to create a slightly wider look, a little more separation between our subject and the background. And to do that, I've dropped an instance of MFilm look onto our background layer, and I'm going to enable the distortion tool. All I really want to do here is add a subtle hint of barrel distortion. What we're going for is to mimic that kind of unfamiliar look of an anamorphic lens. Dialed in just a little bit, I think this increases the kind of 3D-ness of the look. Next, I want to try and tackle the focus fall off that you get at the edges of the screen. And for that, I've dropped on the focus blur effect onto our background layer. And the default settings give you a kind of horizontal look. And of course, I want it to be vertical because I only want to affect the far right and left hand side of our frame. So once tweaked, again, I'm going to dial back the intensity so that it's really subtle. And I'm going to add just 3% because again, you really don't want this looking like an obvious effect that's been added. And then we're adding the easiest and most obvious effect, and that of course is the anamorphic lens flares. You'll notice I've now made this a compound clip because I want to affect the entire thing with this effect. And there are two flavors of anamorphic flare plugins. This kind of thing, which is quite extreme and you'd have to do some tracking to get it to work. Or there's this, where there's no tracking to do as it reacts to Luma in your shot. This obviously looks ridiculous. So I'm going to dial back the intensity of everything, starting with the light threshold. I only really want this to react to the absolute brightest highlights, so I'm setting it to 100. The really nice thing about this type of flare effect is if something blocks the light, you know, the flare disappears as it would with an anamorphic lens. Next, I want to add some polish to our clip. So I'm dropping an adjustment layer on top of it. And this has another instance of M film look. And the reason I've chosen this is because this has one of the best looking uh, grain effects that I've ever tried from a plugin. And I just really love the way it looks. It does the whole thing where it's reactive to Luma, so you won't see it in the brighter parts of your frame, and you will with the darker bits. It's just really natural and you know good looking I think. And finally for the finishing touch of course I'm adding the widescreen bar and that kind of completes it. And then with everything that we've done and does it look realistic? Well sort of. Does it look cool? Yeah I, I think so. And there we have it. Let's now take everything that we learned in this video, gather it together, grind it up and make a nice espresso of tips to take away. Try black mist filters to de-digitize and encourage flaring. Alternatively, try out Eric Lenz's Bloom Mist plugin because it's pretty special. Duplicate your shot and use MRoto AI or equivalent to create separate layers and then be able to edit the subject and background independently. Use something like directional blur to simulate the anamorphic squeezed out of focus areas. Add a touch of blur around the edges to simulate the focus fall off effect. Try adding a touch of barrel distortion to add depth and increase the unfamiliarity of the aesthetic. This doesn't always work so definitely tread carefully. Add anamorphic flare and set subtly. Again, I recommend the ones that react to Luma rather than need tracking. Film grain is optional, but I think it goes really well with all of the other effects and adds to the non-digital feel of this very digital processing. Lastly, widescreen bars are such an obvious but essential step. Alternatively, you can set your project resolution to a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. You just need to Google the correct resolution. So there you go. I just hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. Is it going to fool other video nerds? Probably not, but you know what? Who cares? Because it looks awesome, your clients will think it looks awesome, and I think the general public will agree. So there we go. What did I miss? Do you agree? What techniques would you use to make this more convincing? Definitely let me know. Let's share all of our tips down below and it'll become a nice kind of treasure trove of tips down there for everyone to, uh, to help each other. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio, of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot a better video. See you guys.